from the beginning. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, really interesting uh, comment to, to, to start off the notion that if a machine can do it, why assess it? This is really problematic for us in the language teaching community, particularly where we are teaching languages uh, to university students at uh, not necessarily advanced level of competence, but also low levels of competence. Um, so chat GPT for us represents uh, a, a very, very real challenge because even though it tells us it only speaks French and, and English, this is not true. It speaks uh, an awful lot more languages than, than that. Um, so just to kind of uh, place this presentation because it's about error correction, uh, in, in a sort of situated con context um, and, and in relation to some, some beliefs that I particularly uh, hold dear, um, language teachers do an awful lot of error correction and yet some researchers in second language acquisition argue that, well, at best it has a small impact, at worst it might actually uh, have a ne negative impact uh, on learners, particularly corrections on writing. Um, not everybody agrees with this and certainly learners themselves are very eager to get corrected, but it is a very problematic area of uh, second language acquisition. The other thing is that for language teaching, uh, the development of technology, uh, particularly the internet and then the availability of voice over the internet, have absolutely potentially been game changers and uh, you know, according to John Clapper, uh, who's a professor at the University of Birmingham, this, this really was the single most important development in the history of language learning. However, uh, we also need to question the extent to which this, this really has been that transformative and really to also question in to what extent new digital tools and AI in particular here are really disruptive and to what extent do they need and lead to different ways of doing familiar tasks? What are the sort of digital literacies that uh, need to reshape the way in which we learn? And this is something that I'm uh, very interested in. So, you know, examples of digital language learning strategies could be things like curating one's own vocab list in any app, not just using the ones that are already there, but making one's own using online translators to test the accuracy of what one wants to say rather than to lazily translate it. This is a way of uh, learning as well. To speak to a pocket interpreter app to check that you can be understood when you are speaking in the target language. There are lots and lots and the last one is one I liked best. I had a student to China in China who was using Audacity to speed up recordings of native speakers in order to be prepared for what he thought was going to be this incredibly challenging, authentic pace. So there's an awful lot that we can do uh, with technology uh, in terms of de de developing new language learning strategies. You can have a look at this later. I just did this for fun. I asked ChatGPT what examples if it could give me of uh, digital language learning strategies. It's really dull to start with, but there are some interesting ideas in there as well. Um, so AI brings something entirely uh, new to the platform in the sense that we're now able to have conversations with machines. I mean, when I bought my first Alexa, I was really, really disappointed that I couldn't have conversations in French with it, but now I can. Uh, you know, the, the, the development of, of, um, of that is, is increased a lot. At the moment, ChatGPT can write but not speak, but you can still speak to it if you're using speech to text. Um, so you can start having not just written um, conversations with it, but also uh, a little bit of speaking. So my focus here is really on what can it do for writing? And uh, following all the clamour around uh, ChatGPT uh, at the beginning of the year, one thing really uh, struck my attention was quite how positive people were in France about it. And uh, this is an excerpt from an article in Le Monde, which was published by a um, collective of uh, 
academics, researchers who uh, work at the Institut Jean Nico, which is a really interesting uh, multidisciplinary institution in Paris that includes uh, starts off with analytical philosophy, but includes um, cognitive sciences, linguistics, applied linguistics, and, and a wider range of, of places. You can uh, check their website if you're interested. What I found um, really interesting in this article was the notion of separate, separating the different sort of competencies that come with writing. The notion that there is uh, a writing competence, which is made of, you know, your syntax, your punctuation, your structure, your fluency. But there is also uh, the presence of a communicative intention. And the communicative intention is obviously what uh, ChatGPT is not very good at doing. Um, so I, I became interested in the, in the sort of interconnection between these, uh, these two elements. And Roughly around the same time, my students had, uh, so this is an extracurricular course that they do, it's not particularly high stakes, uh, but, but they they had to do a creative writing assessment uh, assignment as part of a discussion forum where they had to uh, imagine, uh, in a, in a, they were invited to imagine in rather theatrical, theatrical ways an argument that a couple was having. Um, and had to think about, you know, what, what is it that they're arguing about? They, they got given lots of ideas. So this is an example of, you know, a text that one of my students produced. It's very good. It's quite a high level. It's very good. There's a, there's a really good stylistic uh, things going on here. Whether or not the student was aware of that, I don't know. But there are things that are awkward. There are a few errors. And so what I did in my feedback is that I actually asked ChatGPT to correct the text and I was really astounded by what ChatGPT did. You can see just in the layout here, you don't need to speak French, you can see in the layout here that something radically different is happening. It's creating characters, it's removing direct speech. Um, so what's really interesting is that the text that ChatGPT has done here is stylistically, is linguistically better. It's correct throughout. There isn't a single mistake, but actually it's not stylistically as good. And one of the main things that is missing from here was in the narrative style that the student had used. There was a free flow between narration and the character's internal voice. Um, and I thought this was really interesting because it enables to have correct, it enables to have comparisons, analysis, but are not to do with this is this is correct, this is incorrect. They're to do with there was this and then there is this. This is correct, but however, what you did potentially um, is better. Uh, so it sort of changes that that's discussion around correction. Then I kind of played with it and went a step further and asked it to ask ChatGPT to rewrite this in the style of. So I asked it to rewrite it in a Proustian style. And uh, in class, we uh, looked at the differences. We looked at what happens when a, a narrative piece is put into a Proustian style. Uh, so here, this was mostly an opportunity to talk about different registers and the different sort of language tenses that would be used. So really useful to contextualize grammar analysis. Really, really useful. Um, however, the feedback I got from said student was not terribly good. Uh, in the end of your end of course evaluation, end of term evaluation, she wrote, sometimes our written work was fed into chat GPT, which wasn't useful from a student perspective at all. I was a little bit surprised by that because everybody seemed to be having a lot of fun on, on that particular class. And I thought this was really interesting that bear in mind this is uh, Oxford University and uh, there are certain egos at play and possibly this particular student saw this as well you know chat gpt is just cheating it's cheating on both counts as a student to use it it's cheating as a teacher to use it to make my, my work it's also cheating 
so this little experiment really I realized was was kind of not the right way to go about it and that it would really require uh, an element of facilitation and active engagement from learners. I think there's a, also something about the shift in belief about language learning. You know, what is the teacher there for? What can the technology do to help me um, that perhaps I don't need the teacher to do? Um, and, uh, you know, the notion that perhaps this sort of intervention needs to be integrated and planned as part of, of a, a strategy based uh, learning activity. This is not how I used it, uh, admittedly. I was just quite curious to see and share what it could do and to encourage my learners to go and use it too. Uh, and that's the bit that they weren't prepared to admit they were interested in doing. So uh, that's that. Um, and um, certainly uh, the challenges that we face in terms of assessments uh, are, are very, very real. And uh, in, a, in a recent uh, online assessment, we've had evidence of students producing an increasing amount of very correct language. Uh, and, and we are going to have to deal with this and tackle this. So this is a very interesting um, afternoon for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, another really interesting talk. Let me just put you back onto. Oh, there you are. You're on full screen. Um, yeah, really interesting. Thank you. I really, um, I really like that. That was really good. I particularly like the point where you kind of mentioned how you had to adapt kind of your working with with the large language mod models based upon student feedback because it wasn't as you expected. And I think that's that's a really important point to make that we we don't know what students want. And if there are any students with us today, please feel free to kind of stick any comments in the Q&A and we'll, we'll publish those on this. But it's, I think as educators, we shouldn't necessarily kind of make those decisions for students. And that's why it's so important to to work with the students on this. And that's exactly what you've done. And when you kind of you get a surprise and the feedback is not what you were expecting, you then kind of have to adapt. And the fact that you were flexible enough to be able to do that, I think, is a testament to you there. So um, so well done. And I hope your kind of students appreciated that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, we do have time for a quick question. I, I do have one. I hope that's OK. It's um. Given kind of your your experience of, of how you've been engaging with it, and I was just wondering if you had had any kind of advice or kind of any quick tips that you would give other educators who might be new, so coming in now to using ChatGPT uh, GPT in their teaching practice, or kind of considering doing it in the next few weeks, maybe. I, I think around this notion of assistive writing, I mean, we, we, we've entered an era of assistive writing and we've got to embrace it. Uh, and everything that's been said so far by others, I think I totally would endorse is use this to generate critical discussions, to generate comparisons, to reflect upon the different genres of writing, to um, also, in the way that you refine the questions you ask ChatGPT, you're, you're kind of learning about, you know, re to reflect about the constraints with which you are operating. And I think that this can be really uh, um, an enabler uh, for, 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 for learners and, and an inclusive enabler for learners who may have uh, find some things more difficult, either because it's not their first language or uh, or through kind of special learning difficulties or, or whatever it is. Absolutely. I mean, just writer's block sometimes. It's, it's so useful, isn't it, to help you get over that. Certainly in, from my kind of perspective, it's been it's been great just as a sounding board sometimes for a, a variety of different things. Um, it's, you know, that's not to say that you kind of, you know, you then have to critique what it what it gives you, but it's just having that resource at your disposal to be able to do that. And, I, I and also also to kind of get if, you, if you're thinking about a teaching sequence where you want to show students a, an example of something, you can ask ChatGPT to write it for you rather than go and spend hours looking for something on the Internet that you will then have to edit so on and so forth. So for, for, for language teaching, you know, designing, uh, reading comprehensions, uh, um, asking for a text with a particular type of tense or uh, feature, uh, it does it and it does it really well. 
Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to be here today. Um, another great talk. Thank you.